I'm not really sure why I'm only talking about this now, but this condition is quite common. A lot of people either have it or had it in the past. Our topic for this video is going to be all about mild to moderate acne, why you get it, um, what can be done about it, and what products are available over the counter that you can use to improve your condition. Okay, before I begin, I just want to make it clear that I encourage those of you with moderate to severe acne to consult your dermatologist for proper treatment. More often than not, over-the-counter products will not work. You need prescription medication and of course proper assessment because you know what? Sometimes it's not even acne. Acne vulgaris or better known as acne or pimples is a very common condition if not the most common reason why patients come to see us dermatologists. Having this condition can greatly affect one's quality of life, mentally, physically, and even socially. Some individuals who have it may experience low self-esteem and self-image, depression, and even anxiety. And these are the reasons why treating acne early on when they first appear is very important. But before we go to the treatment proper, Pag-usapan na muna natin kung ano ba talagang acne o tinatawag na tigyawat at bakit ba nagkakaroon ito. Most scientifically published papers about acne will describe it as a chronic inflammatory condition involving the pilosebaceous units or yung tinatawag natin na oil glands or sebaceous glands that is multifactorial in origin and cause. Why does it happen? Ba't ako nagkakaroon ng acne? Genetics is a big risk factor. Those who have family members with oily or acne-prone skin are more likely to develop acne. Some studies suggest that environment and lifestyle, your habits, and some neuroendocrine regulatory mechanisms can contribute to why acne occurs. For this video, I'm only going to focus on and talk about over-the-counter treatments for mild to mild and moderate acne, what you can do about them, and how you can improve your skin. It's normal for those with mild to moderate acne to want to look for over-the-counter products that can help their condition. Una-una, they're more accessible and can be less irritating than their prescription counterparts. And that's why I'm making this video because I want all of you to make an informed choice, especially when buying products that you put on your face, rather than doing a trial and error. First ingredient is salicylic acid, which I've talked about several times already in the past. Um, it's an oil-loving anti-inflammatory ingredient that break down dead skin cells, um, goes deep within or inside your pores to dissolve keratin plugs and comedones like your blackheads and whiteheads. And this is why it's excellent for oily and acne-prone skin. Second topical over-the-counter ingredient is benzoyl peroxide or BPO. Now, it comes in varied formulations and concentrations and works on acne because of its comedolytic effect. So, tinutunaw niya yung mga blackheads and whiteheads and also prevent them from forming. As well as its anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties. However, BPO can cause undesirable effects in some individuals. This includes um, dryness, peeling, redness, irritation, purging, even pigmentary changes, and it can also bleach your towels, your um, pillowcases, and even your clothes, which can lead to non-compliance and even discontinuation of this product. Third over-the-counter ingredient is sulfur. Sulfur is a keratolytic with antifungal and antimicrobial properties. It helps control oil production and can benefit those with mild acne. But then again, to some, sulfur can cause dryness, redness, mild peeling, and itching, while others don't like how it smells. And then finally, we have those over-the-counter products that are promoted or are sold as spot treatments containing antibiotics, like your 1-2% to clindamycin. I don't recommend that you use it alone or as a monotherapy because this encourages bacterial resistance. Aside from topical medications, more recently, 
Oral supplements have been studied and are being given to patients with mild to moderate acne. Now I'm going to talk about three ingredients that are found in oral supplements available here in the Philippines. Starting with zinc. Zinc is an essential mineral that we can find or source from food or supplements. It was thought of as a potential treatment for acne when in one study, um, they found out that those with acne had lower zinc levels compared to those who do not. The exact mechanism of action of zinc in acne is not yet fully understood. However, yung mga studies on this proposed several theories. Number one is via the anti-inflammatory effect of zinc. Number two is through its immune modulatory effect and direct inhibition of the proliferation or yung pagdami ng si acne's bacteria. And number three is through its anti-androgenic activity or anti-hormone activity which influences or suppresses increased oil production. Zinc is available over the counter, it's proven safe to use, it's widely available, and it's inexpensive. However, larger studies with longer follow-up periods are needed to be able to determine the optimal treatment dosage and regimen and if zinc can actually be used as monotherapy or as an adjunctive treatment for acne vulgaris. Next oral supplement is lactoferrin. Lactoferrin is an iron binding protein derived from cow's milk. It is being used to fortify food and can be found in skincare, medical, and healthcare products. Interestingly, I found a study that was conducted here in the Philippines um, by Dr. Chan et al. and was published in 2017. It was done on 168 individuals with mild to moderate acne, 84 of whom were given a fixed combination of 100 grams lactoferrin, 11 international units of vitamin E, and 5 milligrams of zinc gluconate versus 84 others who were given placebo. Their study showed that twice daily intake of this combination of lactoferrin, vitamin E, and zinc gluconate significantly improved both non-inflammatory and inflammatory lesions of those who were taking it versus placebo. In addition, a significant reduction in sebum was also noted at 12 weeks. One limitation lang of this study is that the product contained three ingredients. First would be the zinc, which I mentioned earlier, although the dosage in this combination is much less than the ones that were studied as monotherapy. And then you have your vitamin E, which is an antioxidant and has anti-inflammatory benefits. Although to my knowledge, has never been studied as a treatment for acne. So they theorize that it is most probably the lactoferrin in this fixed combination that greatly contributed to the improvement in acne lesions due to its anti-inflammatory properties, its sebum controlling mechanisms, also because lactoferrin has antibacterial effects. It is both bacteriostatic, meaning it stops um, bacterial growth and proliferation, due to its iron binding capability, which is very important for the bacteria to multiply, as well as its bactericidal effect by binding into the bacterial membrane or wall that essentially destroys or kills it. But then again, it might very well be the synergistic effect of all three ingredients combined that led to the improvement of the acne lesions and the overall skin health of the patient. Last but not the least oral supplement ingredient is panthotenic acid or vitamin B5. Vitamin B5 is said to convert carbohydrates, fats, and protein in our body into energy, which helps um, keep our eyes, skin, and hair healthy. In studies conducted investigating the use of panthotenic acid or vitamin B5 in acne, it was shown that it reduces oil and sebum production via increasing coenzyme A metabolism, which promotes the breakdown of oil in the oil glands. Vitamin B5 is also said to improve our skin barrier protection and help reduce skin stress levels. That's why it can be beneficial for those with mild to moderate acne. It is well tolerated and safe to be taken orally as a supplement, but then there's limited data in its use as a treatment for acne and more research has to be done. The benefit of taking oral supplements, if they actually work on acne, is that apart from improving mild to moderate lesions or acne, 
they can also um, benefit the body as a whole. On a lighter note, um, before I end, I'd like to just give a few acne do's and don'ts. So, syempre, simula tayo dun sa mga dapat natin ginagawa. First, we should clean our face properly by using cleansers that are gentle on the skin, specifically targeting oily and acne-prone skin, and that we do this twice a day and after sweating. Number two, use products that are less creamy or lightweight, and when buying makeup, look for the words non-acnogenic or non-comedogenic. These terms are not really regulated. They simply indicate that these products are less likely to cause clogged pores that can lead to breakout and acne. Third, minimize touching your face. Fourth, observe proper sun protection. Fifth, do start your treatment early. And sixth, do consult with a skin expert like your board certified dermatologist. Now we go to the don'ts. Don't use products that are harsh, extremely drying, or irritating. Do not sleep with your makeup on. And lastly, don't be tempted to experiment or do DIY treatments. Now we've reached the end of this video, but before you go, I would just like to emphasize the importance of treating and addressing acne early on because a lot of treatments over the counter are effective, safe, and available and that leaving it alone or letting it run its course can make them worse and can lead to scarring which is actually harder to treat than the acne itself. So that's it guys. I hope that even if this video was quite lengthy, sana may natutunan kayo at sana nakatulong ako. I hope you continue to watch my videos and you continue to support my channel. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you again next time. Bye!